Hi, my name is Rachel Morris. I'm an occupational therapist at the Advanced Rehab Centre in St. Mary's to talk to you about um, the occupational therapy role within um, neurology at the centre. One of the um, key areas that we look at is the complex clients. The clients that are the puzzle, um, they have significant cognitive perceptual difficulties, reduced insights, challenging behaviours, poor attention, significant physical and psychological impairments and sensory processing difficulties. So for the purpose of today's presentation, I've taken one of these areas, um, such as sensory processing modulation, and um, just to describe a little bit of um, what we can do to help clients with these conditions. So sensory processing is about the handling of sensory information by the neural system. And then sensory modulation is about using the sensory input from different activities to change your level of arousal. This is vital when we work with brain injured clients and we also introduce the concept of the sensory eyes. So why is this relevant to occupational therapy? Okay, and all therapies in fact. Well, overstimulation of our senses can lead to hyped up behaviours. People can become upset, angry, anxious or distressed. Under stimulation of these senses can lead to apathy, fatigue, sluggish or fat, flat behaviour and we see these a lot with clients. When you achieve the optimum arousal, you get your concentration, your attention, your ability to manage thoughts and feelings and um, clients start to achieve potential in therapy. So if sensory difficulties are not identified, what happens to these clients? Well, they can have behavioural and emotional problems. They can lead to institutionalised behaviour and generally have poor rehab outcomes. There's reduced quality of life, which is stress for the primary carers and the client. They, they can become socially isolated. They can be deprived from occupational engagement. They, they're unemployable. They have poor participation in daily living skills. So how can we help as occupational Sensory profiling. So we all have sensory preferences. These are oral motor, vestibular, proprioceptive, tactile, visual, auditory, and olfactory. So within each of those areas, um, if we take something simple, like looking at our own sleep routine and how we achieve good sleep hygiene, um, it will help us to understand how those different senses can affect us. So, for example, things like visual stimulation, often people who watch TV before they go to bed can often have poor sleep. Um, some people enjoy listening to music, so auditory, so therefore can promote better sleep in that way. So, looking at something simple like your sleep, your own personal sleep hygiene, and looking at your senses can help you achieve a better night's sleep. Also. So with senses um, and neuroplasticity within the neuro field, um, it's encouraging to know that the brain's sensory system is wired from birth, but that it actually continually evolves through interaction with the environment. Um, the best example that I came up with this is to consider something like echo navigation. So um, I decided to, to make a case study um, for the purpose of this presentation, who was a young man who was 22 years of age. He lived in a group home with four other residents. He was intellectually disabled, secondary to prenatal asphyxia. He had multiple physical disabilities, spastic quadriparesis, epilepsy, scoliosis, gourd, discoid dermatitis, dysphagia, kyphosis, visual impairments, and left cornea ulcer. Within the group home, he attended a day program five days a week. So he was referred to our occupational therapy service here at um, the Advanced Rehab Centre. And um, as part of the mobile rehab innovations, I went out and saw him at the group home. So why was he referred to OT? So the carers were unable without causing him distress. Staff were unable to transition him from the group home to the day programme. Um, he was disruptive to other clients and um, he was, the care staff were also suffering from burnout. So what I did when I got there is I established his normal routine. I had an in-depth interview with the carers and read numerous reports and gathered as much information as I could from the client um, and the nursing notes. 
But most importantly, I spent a considerable amount of time observing him within his normal group home environment, interactions such as getting him in and out of bed, transitioning from different areas in the, in the home and outside, and generally how the care team interacted with him. Um, the next thing that I did um, is identified what his sensory preferences were. So I looked at something that's sensation seeking. So um, he enjoyed proprioceptive in inputs, deep pressure, slow rhythmic movements. He enjoyed a vestibular input, um, swinging motion backwards and forwards whilst he was in his chair. He enjoyed auditory input, but that was quite specific to classical music, and he enjoyed people talking to him in a calm voice. The sensations that he avoided and um, that um, created agitation within with him was light touch. So he had tactile, he was tactile defensive to light touch. Um, visual input, um, he avoided bright lights, and he was often scared and agitated with loud, startling noises. Identifying these um, different sensory preferences within this client, um, I then established some goals that we needed to work towards. So some of the goals that I established with him um, was to shower three times a week with minimum signs of distress, um, to transition from the group home to the day programme four times a week within one month, and for a sensory diet to be implemented fully within one month. So initially I established a shower protocol, now this was through liaising with the psychologists and other key stakeholders as well. Um, we came up with um, a protocol that would help him um, uh, to shower. So we prepared him by um, placing warm flannels onto his arms and into his hands um, 30 minutes prior to showering. And, um, to get him ready for the shower so we kept encouraging him that he always had to talk um, to him all the time to clearly communicate with a calm voice so when when he was actually in the shower room which was 30 minutes later after the preparation had begun we wrapped him we cocooned him in warm towels and we tucked them in tightly so that he felt safe and secure this was to minimize the shower spray that was directly onto his skin which would obviously cause him distress and the carers were advised to peel away a small section of the towel to wash um, his skin um, a small area at a time. And all the while we had to keep communicating with him. We informed him what we were, do what we were doing so that he was involved in the process. When they were actually, when the girls were showering him, they used slow rhythmic motions um, and they just keep, were advised to keep talking calmly. And they were also told not to hurry the process and to see it as a valuable therapy with him um, rather than something that just needed to be done as quickly as possible. What we also did is we set up another protocol and that was for transitioning from him, him from inside to outside and we looked at very simple things for this process, something that was quick and accessible for the carers. So a snug fitting beanie, earmuffs, um, a headset with soothing music, tinted sunglasses, peaked caps, balaclavas, and we also um, sourced a weighted blanket for him uh, and that was uh, and the caring team had guidelines to follow with regards to using that and, um, and all the time clear calm communication and within the group home we also wanted him to be involved up until my involvement when um, the client had become agitated he was often isolated from everybody within the group home because his um, he was distressed and there was high, high pitched shouting and screaming so we tried to minimize that isolation for the client by introducing a sensory diet which just meant that there was structured sensory input throughout the day which meant that um, we were trying to um, minimise um, the client becoming upset and we were tr continually trying to occupy him and um, have that optimum arousal level that I mentioned earlier. So what happened then, after one month we reviewed the goals um, with the care team and we had really, really positive feedback, very dramatic feedback and improvements with the client they were able, all the goals were achieved, um, uh, the carers were enjoying 
and working with the client again because um, the moments of distress have been minimized, carers were suffering less burnout, generally the whole mood of the group home had improved um, and, and uh, the client had been isolated less and was more involved with other people within the group home. So we readjusted the goals um, to try and obviously achieve um, uh, for the client to have um, less outburst and uh, then we, we were followed that up in three months time. We're still in that process at the moment so um, I'll let you know whether they, um, the client has achieved his um, maximum goals of being able to share without any output, uh, distress at all. Um, thank you for listening to this presentation. Um, referrals are appreciated, appreciated to Occupational Therapy at the Advanced Rehab Centre. Um, just if you would like to give me a call, I'd be very happy to talk to you. Thank you very much.